we introduced ourselves the last time to the aspect of what God wants man to have, total dominion. And we went through the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 28, and we learned that dominion is whole. And dominion is the fish in the sea, that's the marine life, the birds in the air, that is air, air, air space, and then the livestock on the ground and creeping plants. And that is the whole land. So it, that's total dominion. And that is why in the airspace we have principalities. We can have powers. We can have uh, spiritual beings sometimes. And when we looked at it, we, were, we also saw that the, the army of a country also takes care of the dominion of the sovereignty of a country. We have the air force for the airspace. We have the, the army for the for the livestock and the land, and we have the navy for the marine life. And so we moved on to look at what does the Bible say. The Bible tells us that it gives us principles of our time, principles that are timeless, principles that can apply to any time, any season. And these are the principles we finalized with. And we came across three levels of leadership. And these three levels of leadership are the essence of what we are introducing today and continuing with this series so that you discover what your ministry is. For those who have just joined us, this is In Christ TV. At ICTV, we believe you need to be heard. And by extension, the word of God needs to be out there. You need to understand the Bible and what God is telling us to have this tripartite arrangement where it's God, his word, and ourselves. And so let us go and look deeply at these principles in the word of God. These three uh, levels we talked about are spearhead, those are the people that are given the vision. At, as a spearhead, every time God works on the earth, he commenced by giving a man or a woman a vision. He declared his prophetic purpose and inspired action from that person. This is very, very foundational. And so Proverbs 29 verse 18 brings us to this level of, of where there is no vision, people perish. A vision is the revelation of God to that individual who carries that vision. And so as we look, there are the motivational and visionary apostolic leaders. So these are really the ones we call spearhead. The ones with the apostolic call. The ones who are the leaders at the front. So they are the movers and shakers. This is what we know and this is what we are seeing. They make things happen like we learned. A look across the Bible, we look at the Old Testament. In Exodus 3 and 4, we meet the visionary. The apostolic leadership is championed by Moses. And then in Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 to 9, it is championed by Joshua. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 1 to 13, it is championed by David. Then in the book of Acts in the New Testament, because the book of Acts is the Acts of the Apostles, what Jesus taught them and what they did, we see it is championed in Acts 26, it is championed by Paul. And then in Isaiah 53, verse, one, verse 10 all the way to 11, we see that there is actually a pronouncement and a, 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 a way that Jesus now is being prophetically brought into this New Testament through the book of Isaiah mainly. And so we see this also echoed. The words of Isaiah 53 are echoed in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10. And the champion of that is Jesus Christ. So the spearhead leaders are very, very clear in the Bible. And so in each of these examples, it starts with God giving a vision. There must be a vision given to a spearhead. So then God again finds other people that are aligned to that vision. When we recall, Jesus prayed the whole night for God to give him people to help work out that vision. 
And so God joins other leaders to that vision. And we said the last time we had this discussion that those are called support leaders. So many visions today are not fulfilled because spearhead leaders do not recognize the importance of a team. It's very unfortunate, but that is what we see. So these and the following principles are just as important to the success and fulfillment of a project. Support leaders are much, very, very much important to the team. For those who've just joined us, welcome. This is ICTV. In Christ TV, we believe that you need to be heard. And in this particular Bethel Chronicles, we are looking at the word of God so that we pick up the timeless principles that help us to be who we are in discovering our ministry. So this level two is God joining other leaders now to that vision, which he's already given the spearhead uh, people. And those are called support leaders. And like we said, the spearhead needs to understand that he cannot work the vision alone. He needs support leaders to make that vision to work. And so, so many of the projects that die off is because of lack of re recognition of this fact. So how did it work out also in the Old Testament and the New Testament? We see Moses had a team. In Exodus, in the book of Numbers, we see Moses develops a team. We also see the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. Joshua had a team of people working with him. We also see in 1 Chronicles 11 and chapter 12, we see David developing a team. And then when we go to the New Testament, we see in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, we see Paul developing a team. And so we, then now, when we study Jesus Christ, who is the champion and the spearhead of the New Testament, we see in Mark chapter 3 and verse 14, Jesus develops a team around him. So in every example, there is accountability, there is responsibility and involvement in the fulfilling of that vision. Once more, there is accountability, there is responsibility and involvement in that vision. Then we look at the third level of leader and that, that God still gives others to the vision. And this third level of leadership is called serving leaders. Now serving leaders, there is a level of leadership essential to the actioning of the vision. You know, sometimes we may, we, 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 we in Kenya will say KYM, Kazi Amkono. Kuna watu, there are people who need to work the Kazi Amkono to actually do the activities. And so these are the serving leaders. So this level of leadership is essential to seeing through the purpose of God. The leadership is not involved in the direction, strategy, and governmental aspect. That level is not involved in the strategy. It is not involved in the governmental aspects of the vision. But they are involved in the outworking of the vision. Without this team, who are the ones who carry? You know, some people say kadayamoko. You know, these kadayamoko kind of people are the people who are the actual people who do the actual activities. This is very, very essential. And in leadership, this would be more or less the supervisor sometimes. And we need to look at the principles of the Bible are not only for church and church activities, they are for all the mountains of influence. In Exodus chapter 18, we meet Jethro. Jethro sees Moses uh, talking to people from morning up to evening. He gets so tired and he virtually is just drowning in his own service. And so Jethro brings this timeless um, Nyumbakumi kind of, um, you know, kind of uh, intelligence. And he tells Moses, no, you can't go on like this. His daughter Zipporah needed a husband. At that rate, Moses was just going to drop dead. And so he brings the wisdom in Exodus 18 and tells Moses, appoint a team such that this was done and a network of serving leaders were released and Moses 
went on to fulfill the vision that God had put in him. When we see the New Testament, we read the book of Acts chapter 6 verse 1 to 4 and we looked at it and looked at where the division was done by Peter. Peter was then the leader in the early part of the book of Acts and he is the spearhead and brings the attention that the apostles initiated then a serving leadership to enable them to continue to lead effectively. God does not only expect us to lead but lead effectively. And so we want to look, is the Bible principle, are the Bible principles only meant for the church and ministry? No. Bible principles are actually useful to every mountain of influence. And let us see how this is. For those joining us, we are discovering our ministry in Bethel Chronicles. My name is Reverend Catherine Gambi. At ICTV, we believe you need to be heard. And the word of God, therefore, needs to be heard. It needs to be out there. And this is what we are doing in this uh, Bethel Chronicles. So we have seen these three types of leaders. And we want to look at the mountains of influence and state, do we really? Do we have spearheads? Do we have support? And the third level is serving. So when we look at the business community, who is the spearhead in the business community? I'm sure if I asked you, our able viewers, you would say without a shadow of doubt that it is a managing director or it is the CEO, the chief executive officer is the spearhead in a business. Then who are the support? The support are the directors in different departments. The director of HR, the director of sales and marketing, the director of finance, the director of admin, the director of operations. These are the support leaders. The very in, in systems where there is a president and vice presidents, the vice presidents make up, making up the various departments are the support team that comes to help the spearhead achieve his vision, and that's the business world. So who are the serving in the business world? The serving leadership is managers. The managers appointed in a department to run and help support that vision and make sure that it is achieved. That's how the business world runs, and you can see that wisdom comes from the Bible. When we look at a nation, like a nation such as ours, nations such as yours, wherever you are, there is always a spearhead. Whether it's a prime minister, whether it is a president, whoever is the head of that sovereign state is the spearhead. In a kingdom, you may say it's the king or the queen, but the spearhead is that one leader who has the vision of that nation, of that sovereign state, of that kingdom. Per se. That spearhead would be a prime minister, a president, a king, a queen, whichever way, but it is one person who has the vision for that country. And then around him, he is supported by others who are to make sure that that vision that he has is realized. And who are these? This is, if it is a, a, a place where there is a prime minister or a president, we have the cabinet, we call them cabinet secretaries. And these cabinet secretaries are to help. They advise the president. They talk. They brainstorm to ensure that they panel beat this vision to make sure that it is realized. And so the people that around the president, around a king, he picks out these people very, very cautiously because they form the support leader uh, support leadership, and they are the ones that are really the advisors. And so in a nation, who are the serving leaders? The serving leaders are the civil service. The civil service is responsible, and that's why we, we get permanent secretaries there. They are permanent, because any new person who comes through an election or otherwise finds them there permanently there. That is why they know the system. They know the work that needs to be done. They are the serving leadership. So then now, coming close now to the church, for Jesus Christ came and brought the church. 
the church is the vehicle that Jesus Christ is going to use to drive the vision into fruition. And so the network of churches, we have network of churches. And this network of churches have a spearhead as an apostle. An apostle has the equivalence of a CEO or a managing director. They manage the whole vision of that network of churches. So that's an apostle, that's an, a spearhead. You may call him uh, the archbishop, um, whatever level that the network of churches have in terms of names, it remains in the, in the, in the biblical terms apostolic. So that's an apostle. And who are the support in a network of churches? A network of churches has the support. Those who are advising the archbishop or advising um, the apostle, they are called the apostolic team. The apostolic team. Okay, and that apostolic team might be even in diocese, there might be the regions in every diocese. Uh, there is an apostolic team that comes to advise this a particular spearhead apostle. Then, who are the serving leaders in a network of churches? Those will be the various pastors of the various churches, they are the serving leadership because they take that vision from the support leaders as well, then it is put in activities and they go and make sure that these activities are realized at their churches. Then now from our local church angle, now we are, we are going now down, down, down to the local church. Who is the spearhead? The spearhead is the pastor of that church. The pastor of that church, the shepherd of that church or the leader of that church is the spearhead. He's the one who owns the vision for that local church. And who are the support team for this? They will be the elders that are appointed. So elders are given a lot of space and principles in the Bible on their qualifications. We meet this in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 and the book of Titus chapter 1. This We read the qualifications of elders very, very critical because they are the support. They are the ones that will advise the senior pastor or the pastor of the local church. And then we have now the serving leadership. Who is the serving leadership in a local church? The serving leadership are deacons. Deacons. Indeed, in the book of Romans, we see Paul appreciating some deaconess. And sometimes we normally will have this debate about whether women ought to preach or ought to do work in ministry. But we see in, um, in Romans chapter 16, Paul appreciates a, a, a group of women who are completely sold out to the ministry. And so we meet Phoebe, who is, a, who is actually a deaconess. We meet Trufosa. We meet all these women that he appreciates. He appreciated their service as serving leaders. Okay. We welcome our listeners who have just come. We appreciate you listening to us. This is ICTV. And at ICTV, we believe that you need to be heard. My name is Reverend Catherine Gambi, And I am coming to give you, um, you know, the wisdom that comes from the Bible where we have biblical principles that help us in discovering what our ministry is. As we started, we did come up with the issue that we need to know that as congregants, we have work to do. As the, the, the people who are preaching, they have work to do. As the middle-level leaders, elders, and deacons, we have work to do. All of us must work in a church setting. We don't just sit and warm the pews. So we welcome all of you here and this word of God is the one that we are saying it needs to be heard. The wisdom of the Bible needs to get out there so that you do the work of God better. So after learning about these three levels of leadership, it brings a challenge. So what is that challenge? So this challenge demands that we do five things.
things. And these five things are going to form the conclusion of this um, this uh, chronicles that we are having. So that brings us uh, to concluding the message for today with challenge. So what is the challenge? If it, the Bible clearly defines the spearhead, the support leader, and the serving leader. So what is this challenge? The challenge is the implications of the demands that are put on the various levels of leadership. And we, we have five points uh, to conclude on this. Point number one is discover what you are. Discover what you are. Are you a spearhead? Are you support? Or are you a serving leader? It is interesting that in the parable of the talents, Jesus uses three levels of ability and responsibility. And so we learn about this one with five talents, the one with two talents, and this one with one talent. So those are three levels of responsibility. And so this is very interesting when we see it in Matthew 25 and verse 24 to 30. We learn about the one with the five talents who is apostolic, is a spearhead, level one. A lot is demanded from them. The second level, which is the two, is the various support leaders that are advising the spearhead. And so this support have two, and so they multiply two to two. And so this is the support leadership. But we learn about this third, third level. And this could be us, that we are not being used in the church at all. We are not giving ourselves. We learned at the beginning of this uh, series that God is looking for men and women who are able to give themselves to his vision at restoration. And so discover what you are. Today, look and read that parable of the talents from new knowledge that we have discovered. Are you a spearhead? Are you support or are you a serving leader? The second pointer or challenge is be what you are. Once you discover what you are, be what you are. You will never be happy in a support leadership role if you have a spearhead anointing and calling. And that's why we see clashes in places because spearheads are in support. And so they, they, they look like they are fighting the leader because they are actually spearheads. And that is why they need to move away. If this happens also in church settings. And we say, oh, we've been excommunicated. We have been pushed out of the vision. You are actually a spearhead struggling. You have a spearhead anointing, but you are in the wrong level. So what are you called to be? The reverse is also true. Are you taking a higher level and yet you are a lower level? In which case, you collapse a system. So be what you are is the second aspect. The third aspect is be aware of where you are. Where are you at this point of your life? You may have a spearhead calling, but be in the process of preparation and training. We all don't drop like the way we see the series of Mr. Bean dropping from heaven. No, we are not like that. We must be trained. We must be prepared. So are you in the process of preparation and training? You could be a spearhead, but you do need training. So it is usual that we work that out in a serving role. And that's why we see in Acts chapter 6, Stephen and Philip, the evangelist, the only evangelist the Bible calls Philip the evangelist, they started as serving. They were serving on tables. But we come and see their ministries rise to very high levels because they are spearhead. But they accepted the preparation, the process of preparation and training, and they worked very, very hard in that particular level. For those who are just joining us, this is ICTV, and at ICTV, we believe you need to be heard. And so the fourth aspect of our five issues of challenge is recognizing our boundaries. Now, every leader has limitations. It is important to be aware of what, has God, what God has called us to be and gifted us for, and not to move beyond those boundaries. Yeah? Even the Apostle Paul was aware of those limitations. We are limited in that perspective. And that's why Paul at some of the stages says, get for me John Mark. You know, because the kind of service that is required, the person who is gifted in that is a younger person, John Mark. And at one point he didn't want John Mark. But so we see that we need to recognize our boundaries up to where we can work. And beyond that, we cannot. And this is the reason why we pass the baton 
to the right person. So recognize your boundaries. The fifth aspect is recognize other people's giftings. It's only when you recognize the gifts in others that together everyone achieves more. We make a team. So to avoid a competitive spirit and create an environment for the team to work, it is essential that we honor and respect the giftings and abilities of those we are working with in leadership. We need to recognize. We, we are all gifted differently. Let's recognize the leaders, the leadership skills in others, abilities in other people, and let's support them and let them come out. Encouragement and recognition are necessary to fulfill the vision effectively. So as we reflect on these five issues that we have discussed, we need to apply them to our journey, our Christian journey, or where we serve, even in the seven mountains of influence. Where are you now? What are you? Have you discovered your level of calling? This is Reverend Catherine Gamby, and the series we are dealing with is Bethel Chronicles. At ICTV, we do believe that you need to be heard. And with this series, we are training you to know the leader that you are, the capacity and ability that God has given you so that you can be accountable, you can be responsible, and you can live a legacy when you realize your purpose and you work out your purpose in line with the will of God. And so we come to the conclusion of this series, and this is we have conducted a biblical overview of leadership we have also looked at the pattern of leadership that is foundational in the scriptures and we have begun our journey of discovering our personal place in leadership or in ministry. Wherever God has called us to, let us know that we need to discover what our ministry is so that we are effective and we enjoy the, the, we enjoy the joy of the Lord. It becomes our portion because we are in that element of our life.